Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, Judge Martinez, t tell me about state police power. Senator, my understanding of state police power is the authority of the state officials to enforce state law. Well, what if the state law is in violation of federal law? Well, we have the Supremacy Clause um, under um, Article 6 of the Constitution that provides that federal law is the supreme law of the land. Yeah, but that's not an exercise of state power. What's the origin of state's police power? My understanding, Senator, is also from Article 1 of the Constitution where the Congress was enumerated certain powers and under um, one of the provisions of Article 1, anything that was not specifically enumerated. You don't think it's Article 10? Well, Article 10 has to also, um, is also applicable. Actually, actually, the Tenth Amendment, what does the Tenth Amendment say? The Tenth Amendment provides that any um, specific um, power that was not given to um, a Congress or denied to the states applies to the states and the people. And that's the origin of a state state's police power, right? Yes, Senator. Okay, it's not Article One. I, I read it as both, Senator, but I, if it's Article, if it's Amendment 10, then it's Amendment okay. 10, Senator. Um, does the federal government have police power? The federal government has um, authority to enforce its federal law. Yes, ma'am. But we've talked about the state's police power. Does the federal government have police power? Well, the executive branch has the power to enforce the law executed by the legislature. Well, but, but the federal government can't. The, the Constitution's pretty clear that, that uh, you have to have an enumerated power in the Constitution, right, in order to be able to do something? Well, it's my understanding, Senator, there are enumerated powers, but there are also implied powers in the Constitution. Yeah, but those are implied Those are implied to be enumerated. There is no federal police power, is there? Well, Senator, my understanding is that the executive branch has the power to execute the laws of the United States. I know, but that has nothing to do with police power. Let me move on. Um, judge. I'm sorry, Counselor. Tell me how to say your last name. Suknanan, Senator. Say it again, please, ma'am. Suknanan. Suknanan? Suknanan. Suknanan, okay. Um, counselor, you used to practice law at Jones Day, is that right? That's correct, Senator. Okay. And there was an article in the New York Times. I don't know whether you leaked it to them or somebody from your law firm leaked it to them. Your firm, Jones Day, you were a partner then, and uh, you were representing a party, your firm was, and you were, in uh, a post-election uh, challenge to Pennsylvania, um, uh, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court, of, of course, extended the... Uh, the filing deadline for absentee ballots in the, in the, in the president's election, and that was challenged uh, as being unconstitutional in both the state and the federal constitution. Am I right? Yes, Senator. And Jones Day was handling that case, right? That's correct. And um, uh, you were a partner at Jones Day, is that right? That's correct, Senator. Okay. And who was your client in that case? The firm's client was the Pennsylvania GOP, Senator. Well, it's your client too, right? Correct, Senator. I was not the lawyer in that case, yeah. but it, yes, Senator. But you were going to share in the profits made from from the bills paid by the Pennsylvania GOP, right? Senator, it was a firm client. I was a partner at the firm. And you were going to share in the, in the, in the money, right? Correct, Senator. Okay. And uh, in, a, in a call where you and some of your partners were talking about the case, this is what you said about your client who's paying you. You said, this is according to an August 25, 2022 article, you said, quote, this lawsuit was brought for no other reason than to deprive poor people of the right to vote, close quote. You said that, didn't you? 
Senator, those were not my words. I do not know who provided that quote to the reporter. I you never gave it to the reporter, did you? Senator, I never spoke to the reporter or anyone in the media about the meeting in question, and I'll tell you why. As a partner at Jones Day, all partners are bound by a confidentiality obligation to the firm. And that meeting was an internal confidential partners meeting. Yeah, I never spoke to the media about it, and those were not my words, Senator. This is this this is a violation of about ninety hundred and twenty-seven provisions of the Code of Ethics, isn't it? Senator, that's why I never spoke to that reporter, and those were not my words. I do not know who provided that quote to the what reporter. What do you mean? Who was trying to deprive poor people of the right to vote? Who were you referring to when you said that? Senator, as I said, those were not my words. Oh, you never said that. You did not. Senator, those were not my so words. we deposed your partners on that call. They would say, no, she never said it. Senator, I am telling you here today under oath that those were not my words. I never but spoke to them. We deposed your partners on... And, and put them under oath, they would say, no, she never said that? Senator, that I can't testimony? tell you what someone else would say under oath. I can tell you under oath that those were not my words. I never spoke to the media about that call. And you think on light of this, you're qualified to be a federal judge? Senator, you, I never spoke to the media. You say that about a client? Senator, as I said, those were not my words, and I never spoke to the media about the meeting in question. I take my obligations, ethical and otherwise, incredibly Counsel, seriously. You said that, didn't you? Senator, I did not say those words. So the New York Senator, Times got it wrong? Senator Butler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 